Praise the Lord. Praise be to God. Um, praise reports, testimonies, anyone? <laughs> you made it. There you go. Obstacles. Right, I hear you. By God's grace, though, amen? It's sufficient. His grace is sufficient. Um, praise God. Yes, he is good. He is faithful, merciful, and on time, all-knowing, all-powerful, above all, over all, and in control of all. Um, so that he is a great God. And we have plenty to give him thanks for, plenty to praise him for. Um, and, you know, our praise should be about who he is and not how we feel. You know, we should just praise him whether we're feeling grumpy, ornery, angry, frustrated, or happy, joyful, whatever it is, we should just give him praise anyways. Because the, his word says to praise him in and for all things and give him thanks in and for all things as well. Um, but if it's okay, if we just close our eyes and if you want to lift your hands, if you want to stand, you're more than welcome to stand. In the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, we bless you tonight. We praise your wonderful name tonight, Father. You are worthy, you are holy, you are mighty. I thank you, Lord, that this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for your promises today, Father. Thank you for your hedge of protection. I thank you, Lord, for your hedge of purity. Father, we bless your wonderful name, that name that is above every other name. And I thank you, Lord, that when we loose the name of Jesus, hallelujah, that there is power in that name, there is healing in that name, there is salvation in that name. And I thank you, Father, that there is joy in the name of Jesus tonight. We praise you and exalt you, Father. We magnify you, Lord, that you would be exalted and lifted up above all things, Lord. I thank you, Father, that everything is under your feet, and those feet are on the church, Father. And you have given us authority and power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and to have power over all the enemy with those feet in the name of Jesus. I worship you tonight. I, I appreciate you tonight, Lord. There is none like you, Father. You are, the, you are the beginning and the end. You are the true vine. I thank you, Jesus, that you are the way, the truth, and the life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father, that you are a prayer answering God. And we ask, Lord, that you would minister to us tonight, Lord, that we would be empowered by your grace tonight to be able to receive your word and that we would apply these words to our lives, Father, and that your word would bear good fruit within us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, that by your grace that we would, have, that we would choose, Father, to know you better and that we would choose, Father, to cultivate and work on our relationships with you on a daily basis, Lord. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we lose the spirit of faith, we lose the gift of faith, we lose the peace, the love, the joy, and the righteousness of God to be manifest in our lives and in this community in the name of Jesus. If you believe and you agree with me, say amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So yes, uh, this I guess will be part two. I hate when my phone doesn't recognize me. It's this new screen that I had to get. <laughs> A couple weeks ago, sometimes it doesn't recognize my face. I'm with my glasses. Sometimes I'll have the glasses on and I'm dropping them. Today is not one of my days. <laughs> I'll have my glasses on and my phone's like, doesn't recognize my face. I'm doing this. I'm going, <laughs> come on, peekaboo. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> it's me. Um, so, yeah, this is part two, I guess you could say, of we were talking about the names of Jesus, we spoke about last week, the complete revelation of God. Jesus fulfilled the Old Testament names of God. And so we're going to start tonight with the New Testament church, which is identified by the name of Jesus. And there, there's quite a few scriptures that I could give you. Um, so I, let me just start by giving you some of the ones that we're not going to read here. So Matthew 10 and 22 that's going to go over some, you know, about being hated for his name, where he tells us, we're, you know, we're going to be hated because of his namesake, right? Um, Acts 5, 28, uh, 15 and 26, how we're, you know, being persecuted for his name. Um, you know, we're, we're going to face persecution as the church, as believers. We're going to face persecution. If you haven't already, which we probably some of us already have, right? If you haven't, you will. We're... Look around as this world is getting crazier by the minute. Um, 
Let me see, where's another? Colossians 3 and 17, talking about how all that we do should be in his name, okay? You know, the, the, the way that I do my job, I should, be, I should do it in his name. I should do it, everything that we do should be a form of worship unto him as well, right? God help us, I'm lacking, okay? Uh, you don't have to raise your hand, but I'll raise it for you. Okay, we're all, <laughs> we're all in the same boat, I believe. But, you know, once again, by his grace, um, Acts 4 and 17 through 18, preach and teach in his name. You know, when we're talking to people, we know we just tell people what, you know, how there's power in the name of Jesus. You know, that one, that song, you know, there's songs that we sing about power in the, power in the blood, but the power in the name of Jesus. You know, like it, we just when we started praying, you know, I just felt, you know, joy in the name of Jesus. There's salvation in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. Um, how about John 14 and 13? Pray and make requests known to God in the name of Jesus. How do we pray? We pray in the name of Jesus. Right? You know, we, we pray, we, we believe in the authority that is in the word of God, but I know that there is a power, though, that is in the name of Jesus. When I say the name of Jesus, I believe that every knee shall bow, and that there's going to be a time where every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, but why not right now, you know, whenever the enemy's coming against me, to where I just say, I re, you know, I bind up this evil spirit in the name of Jesus. Even the enemy knows the power that's in that name. Uh, where are we at? Matthew 18 and 20, gathering in his name. We gather tonight in the name of Jesus. I mean, we can be like David, how David, you know, he, he he's, came against Goliath and he said, you know, you come at me with sword and spear, but I come in the power of the Lord. You know, we could come at things in the name of Jesus. You know, I've, I believe it was a few weeks ago we were talking about maybe before we leave the house, when we're going to go somewhere, we're saying, I'm going here to the doctor in the name of Jesus. I'm on my way to work in the name of Jesus, you know, and, and just start speaking those things. You can pray for peace to go before you in the name of Jesus. I don't believe that we have, you know, um, those angels, I believe that those angels are already around us, right? They've already been dispatched. We just need to pray that, you know, in the name of Jesus, Lord, help me to see if that's part of your will for me to see angels, Lord, that I would see and recognize that, you know, those angels that you have placed about me. I believe, you know, because I pray it, I believe it. We got we to gotta have faith in things we're praying about, amen? <laughs> I pray for there to be peace when I get home from work. And I can't, that doesn't mean I should be coming in the house just testing it. <laughs> right? I got to be. When we're praying that, for example, like I pray that there's peace when I get home, and the Lord's like, well, you're bringing the peace with you, okay? You're bringing the peace with, not to say that there's never peace at home, I'm just saying, but maybe that's the case. To where the Lord's like, okay, well, let's see how this works out. Once again, I, be I believe, you know, that he is a prayer answering God, and I always go back to this, I know, and that, you know, we pray for the fruit of the Spirit to be at work in our lives, right? To where God's like, okay, you're praying for the fruit of the Spirit, and you have access to the fruit because of his spirit that lives within us, those that have the gift of the Holy Ghost. And he's like, well, all right, we're going to see what things can happen in your life today, how you're going to ta take of that fruit. How are you going to take of that love? Are you going to have choose love to pull that love from the fruit, that aspect of the fruit from the gift of the Holy Ghost that dwells within me, or am I going to pull hatred because I'm walking and living in the flesh, right? Um, and trust me, we all fail at times but god's grace just gives us another opportunity you know opportunity for us to put on forgiveness and repentance <laughs> um an opportunity to where the lord's like hey we're gonna try this test again today and he doesn't warn us like hey get ready like when you walk into school and it would be on the chalkboard real big pop quiz today or or test i hated when i seen that when i walked in like oh you almost wanted to just walk in and walk back out i'm not saying that i ever did that <laughs> what oh test nope <laughs> i'm not here today <laughs> any kids watching i'm not condoning that i'm not telling you you should do that um 
All right, so let's look at a few things that we will read. Acts 5 and 41. Oh, I don't want to read out of the NET. I'm so... Hold on one second. I didn't change it. I'm sorry. All right, Acts 5 and 41. And they departed from the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. So right there, an honor to suffer for his name. Well, that's, some, that's a word we don't want to hear, right? That we don't want to suffer. Anybody like to suffer in here? We, we don't like to suffer. But once again, the Lord, he is not com- he's not concerned about our comfort. He's concerned about, about us doing the will of God. And if it's part of our, part of his, if it's his will for us to suffer for his name, he's going to give us all the things that we need to make it through that. I have everything I need. I have him. I have him. I have the gift of the Holy Ghost. I have mercy. I have grace. I have the blood covering. I have repentance and forgiveness. I have, the, like I said, the joy. I have the fruit of the Spirit. I have the armor of God. I have all these things. I have the Word of God. I have a relationship with Him. I don't need anything else to make it through. How about Acts 4 and 10? Bubba said no. Um, Acts 4 and 10. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. So we can, just that same power that raised Jesus from the dead, it's that we pray in the, we pray in the name of Jesus. We can pray that same resurrection power. We can pray that healing virtue into somebody's life. To where somebody can be healed, that somebody can be made whole, body, mind, and spirit. Your emotions. God can heal your emotions, right? We, sometimes you feel like you're all over the place. God can heal that. But when I pray it, I've got to believe it. And sometimes I've just got to work my way through it. In the, you know what? In the name of the Lord, because it might not just be boom. It might be to where like the Lord's like, okay, yeah, praise and exalt me and magnify me. I know we, we spoke it in the name of Jesus, but then we just praise him and give him thanks and walk in it. Sometimes we just don't, we have to walk in it. We have to manifest. It has to be manifest. So that means, you know, just like Jesus or uh, God, the Spirit of God, robed himself in flesh and was manifest on the earth in the body form of Jesus, he was, made himself known. He made himself visible. Sometimes we have to make it visible. Yes, the joy of the Lord. I've been, like I said, our emotions were battling depression. You've been feeling depressed. And, also, you know, I, Lord, would you take this garment of heaviness from me in the name of Jesus? Would you give me the joy, that the joy of the Lord, that I, my joy might be full? That I would have the garment of praise. And you know, sometimes we got to manifest that joy now because I've got to praise God. I've got to magnify God. I've got to show that he is above this depression. And that I can have victory in him. It's not we just pray pray and and say it in the name of Jesus and just expect it to. I've got to manifest it. I've got to make it. It's got to be made known to people. That they say, oh, you got the joy of the Lord. I can't, I can't pray for depression to be gone and still walk around. I'm so depressed. Well, did you pray in the name of Jesus? Did you ask him to take the garment of heaviness? Yes. Did you ask him that your joy might be full? Yes. Well, then why are you moping still? We've got to manifest that. Not continue. <laughs> we do that though, right? Uh, yeah. Woe is me. I am so, woe is me. Hold on, I got the power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the power of the, the one true God that raised Jesus from the dead. You're saying he doesn't have power over depression? <laughs> Hold on a minute. He does. And that power resides in us. That authority resides in us because he's given it to us. And we're to be his conduits. We're to be his, his ambassadors here on earth. And if somebody else is dealing with it, 
All you got to do, you know, you just lay your hand on their head in the name of Jesus. I, I release joy that your joy might be full in Jesus' name. It's simple. And faith, it's simple. Really, it's simple. I just have to believe. I just have to believe. I don't got to do 10 push-ups, 15 jumping jacks. I don't got to get all whatever, go run a mile. I don't have to do anything vigorous. I just got to believe. I just believe and speak it and manifest it. But this is so hard. Well, it is if you keep saying it's hard. This is too difficult. No, it is not too difficult. It is when we get in that mindset and continue to speak it out and continue to murmur and complain, right? Instead of murmur, we spend all that time murmuring and complaining and whining. We can use that same breath to be praising, magnifying, and manifesting. The same breath. Wasting breath. <laughs> if we're just whining, complaining, and Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Help us, Lord. Acts 4 and 12. Um, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. We have to be. It's, it's by his name. <clears throat> I know we talked about this, about being baptized. Being baptized in the name of Jesus. It has to be in that name. There's power in that name. There's power in that name because he's the one that, you know, Jesus was the one that died on the cross. Jesus was the one that suffered, took all the beating. He took on all the sin of all men. He was that, that lamb without spot, that spotless lamb, the lamb without blemish. He was that perfect sacrifice, Right? To where he took on, he was, the, he was without spot, without blemish. He had no sin, and he took on all of our sin, and he took that and hung it on the cross. So that we can have victory because he had the victory. So yes, there is the power in the name of Jesus because he's the one that went through it. He's the one that overcame. He's the one. And we know about, you know, there's no power in the titles. There's no power in the titles. There's no power in my title of Mr. There's no power in the title of your Mrs. or Miss or Ms. or whatever we go by. There's no power in that. There's no power in, you know, whatever titles that we might have. The power becomes, we know when we're talking, you know, if I go to the bank and we sign Mr. on a check and say, here, cash this check, they're going to be like, Mr., what? <laughs> we need to have your name. We got to know your name. That's when things get done. In the name of Jesus, we baptize you for the remission of your sins. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Philippians um, 2, 9 through 10. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. I don't care what the name is. I don't care what we want to name it whether it's cancer, whether it's depression, whatever name we put on it, heartache, sorrow, pain, tribulation, trial, suffering, whatever it is, that name of Jesus is above everything. It doesn't matter what we, well, he, like I said, he had to take on everything so that we can have victory in it. And he tells us, he tells us in his word, hey, in the world you're going to have tribulation, but in me you could have peace. So even in all this craziness that's going on in our lives and all the craziness that's going on in this world, I still can have peace. And you know what? I believe that's his will to where this world is crazy and people could go, how do you have so much peace in this craziness? I see what you're going, you might be going through something. Anybody? Anybody ever witness God's peace at work in your life when you're going through it and they're like, how in the world are you making it through this? 
I believe that's God's will for us to be able to go through that. You know, it's, well, let me tell you a little story about a, about a man I know that created all things. You know, my, my Jesus, my healer, my comforter, the one who gives me peace, the one who makes my joy full, even in this storm, even in this hardship. You know, because I believe that, you know, my, he could turn my mourning into dancing. I believe that he can turn my, my sorrows into joy. I believe that he can change me from, you know, from this to what I'm walk, trying to walk in now. He can change us. We got, we got proof in here. There's a lot of proof in here. I know we don't have a lot of people in here tonight, but I know there's a lot of proof in here that God is able and he, he's willing to change, um, yes, so that was, what was that, Philippians 2, name above every name and that every knee would bow at his name, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, Mark, uh, <clears throat> Mark 16, 17 through 18, praise God, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name, Shall they cast out devils? They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Praise God. <laughs> they shall take up serpents. No, we shall not take up <laughs> any serpents and worship with a snake. <laughs> it does not say to worship with a snake. I believe it was Peter... Uh, wasn't he gathering some firewood at one time and Paul and uh, gathering some firewood and got bit by a snake and nothing, he was fine. Okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to believe it for that. I'm not believing that I need to be dancing with some snakes, or, you know. Um, but look at, I mean, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, speak with new tongues, if, we, if you don't have the gift of the Holy Ghost, you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost and speak with new tongues. There, that is, that's the evidence that we have been filled with the gift of the, of the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost. That's the evidence of me knowing, right? I just can't say, oh, Heavenly Father, would you fill me with your Spirit? And then, whoop, there it is. I got it. Wait a minute. How do you know? There's got to be something. There's got to be proof. There's got to be that evidence of that. Um, so that's what that, that's what tongues is. Cast out devils, heal the sick in the name of Jesus. We don't have to have, you know, someone's like, Hey, can you come and pray for me? I'm sick. Or can you come and visit me in the hospital? I, you know, I'm battling this or whatnot. We, it doesn't have to be a, Oh no, I don't know what to pray. I better call the pastor or I better call so-and-so. No, it could be as simple as, you know, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the healing virtue to touch you, that you would be healed and made whole. In the name of Jesus, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Simple as that. You know, I know when Sam got sick and we were praying, Lord, heal him, heal him, heal him. And God was, after a while, he was like, I already heard that. Um, how about if you pray for my will? Ooh, okay. <laughs> okay. Like I know you can do it, but sometimes what if it's what if it's not God's will for something, and we continue to pray? Do we? I mean, does God honor our prayer, our selfish prayer at times? I believe He does. But that doesn't mean it's His will, right? But when we get to that place where we can say, you know what, Lord, I pray for Your will to be done. We got situations going on in our lives, right? We got things we want answers to. I got something going on at work right now, and I'm, you know, I try, I'm casting it every day. Lord, I cast my cares every day in the name of Jesus. Lord, I don't want, I want your will to be done, and I want your grace to be able to, you know, if I don't, if your will and my will don't line up <laughs> and look kind of similar, I pray, you know, either way, I want the grace, even if it lines up or if it doesn't look the same, there's how I want this to be answered, you know, the outcome. I still want the grace to be able to get go through it either way. Um, yeah, so praise God. And I'm still going to praise him. I'm still going to worship him. 
I'm not going to walk away from him because he didn't answer my the prayer according to my way. You know, because he knows what's best for us anyways. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, where were we at? Mark 16. How about Acts 2? Well, we already know Acts 2.38, right? You could probably quote that. But you know what? Let's just read what it says. Um, since we were talking about being filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. So let's start at 37. Well, when Peter... Uh, so 37. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? When he told them that what they had done, they had crucified the Messiah. And they wanted to... They were convicted in their hearts and they wanted to know what they should do and then Peter said unto them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are far off so that promises to everyone not just those that were in earshot that day not just well, that's just Bible time. That's just for people back then. No. Repentance and being baptized in the name of Jesus, receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost, that's for us today. That's part of God's salvation plan, right? These things need to be done. Praise the Lord. Baptized, like I said, baptized in the name of Jesus. But, you know, talking about the name of Jesus, it's not some... The name of Jesus is not some magical formula, but we must have faith in the name, okay? We know that, you know, it's not like, in the name of Jesus, poof. You know, that's not what it's about. It's about having faith that, you know what, I believe that you are my healer. I believe that you are their healer when I'm praying for somebody else. I could have faith for you for days, right? You could have faith for me for days, but when we're the one... In the, with the sickness or we're the one going through it. But you know what? We've got to get past that. We've got to get past that to where we're, we're like, you know what? There's so many people dying in this world. I've got to get beyond my situation. I've got to get. We're like, well, it's just so hard, right? It's not that. It, and I get it. I get it. But Jesus, what did he do? He went to prayer. <laughs> Things got tough. He, he was like, you know, I, I, I'm going to go away. I'm going to go spend some time in the garden. I'm going to go spend some time in prayer. And what? And even in prayer, his prayer time, what? Hey, if you could take this cup from me, if you could take this from me, you know what? Nonetheless, not my will, but your will be done. And then he was back at it, praying for the crowds that were thronging him. And, you know, a uh, woman with an issue of blood, just if I could just touch the hem while he was on his way to go heal somebody else. To go, I believe it was Jer uh, Jairus' daughter that was dead. He was on his way to heal her. And all of a sudden he stops in the middle of the crowd. Hold on, who touched, the, who touched me? And they're like, really? What do you mean who touched you? I felt, he felt virtue go out. He felt that her, she was touched. He felt her faith touch him. And that virtue was released. Hold on, who touched me? Yeah. So she, sometimes, I mean, is that, is that where we got to get to, to where the Lord's like, I'm just going to keep allowing you to get to where you're at your last resort. I'm going to be your last resort. But we should not be the last resort. He should be the first thing we turn to. Now she, this woman, she had that issue, so she had spent all her money on doctors and whatever else to try to be healed. No, I know, I know where I need to go. I need to go, I, you know, in the name of Jesus. And sometimes that's all you can say, right? You're in, you're in a situation, a car's barreling down at you. <laughs> Jesus! I've been there on the road. Oh, Lord Jesus, help us. Real quick, er, makes, makes the way. There was no way. When you think there was no way, the Lord makes a way. I mean, <laughs> really? what? why is this here? All right, for a time is this. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. I mean, really, if, that, if we weren't in that exact spot, okay, we're into, I don't know what we're in this one time. I mean, we weren't cruising down the highway, but we had, 
we were going 35, 40 on, uh, yeah, on the Escort and Matthews Road. And uh, just all of a sudden, this car pulls out and almost T-bones us. And er, I'm like this. And there should have been a curb there, but it was actually like they were trying to build another road or something. That they quit, and it was only this much of, <laughs> uh, this much pavement, but it was just enough for us to go, er, er, and right back on the road. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. When there was no way, he made a way. <laughs> and hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He knows what he's doing in our lives. Whenever we're like, I see this thing coming at me the enemy's just coming at me staring at me and he's hold on who what are we trusting in who are we trusting in thank you father hallelujah i'm going to take you by the hand and just i'm going to hold on to that hand by i grab your hand by faith and i'm going to i'm going to trust in that hand and i'm 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 trusting you not in that hand but i trust in you and i'm not going to let go no matter what's in front of me, no matter what's coming at me, no matter what the doctor says, no matter what's going on at work, no matter what's going on in this world, Lord, I'm trusting in you. When it looks like the enemy's just having his way and everything's going his way, I'm still trusting in God because God has the final say. He's the one that gets to say what the outcome's going to be. Who praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Peter's revelation, Matthew... Uh, Matthew 16, that's not it, 16, 13 through 16. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, <coughs> and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So Jesus was not addressing Peter, but his disciples but Peter was the one that answered, Thou art the Christ, the anointed one or the Messiah. So in other words, Peter was saying, Jesus, you are the one the prophets told us that would come. So he had that revelation. You are the one, the Messiah. You know, and we, we look back and we judge all those people back then, right? How could you not, right? We do it. How could they not notice? How could they not recognize this? Well, there's a lot of things that we're not recognizing today. A lot of things that we're not recognizing. Um, so what is the impact of this? What was the revelation? Why was this revelation so important? And Isaiah, um, let's see what I, Isaiah 7 and 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. The son born of a virgin would be called Emmanuel or God with us, right? That's what that means, God with us. Thank you, Jesus. We've got to, re we've got to just hold on to that every day, that God is with us, that God is for me, and not against me, oh, that's so wonderful. That is so wonderful to know that, that God goes with me wherever. When I go to work, God goes with me to work. When I go to the store, I got God with me going to the store. When I'm in the car driving somewhere, we could talk to the Lord. Like, I think I talked about it last week, how we, do you ever make up your own worship songs <laughs> that are really not good? <laughs> but yeah, the Lord likes it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> praise God. Isa yeah, so Isaiah 9, 6 through 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. 
Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with, just, and with justice from henceforth for even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform it, perform this. So notice here how the son would be the father. Unto us a son is given, the everlasting father. Praise God. And you're like, well, I just don't know how to get into worship. Here's a perfect example of, you know, you are wonderful. You are counselor. You just start telling them who he is. I'll bet you you don't get into like three or four words into it. You're, you're praising God. You're mag. If you let it hit you, okay, if you if you get into it with, with faith and, and really wanting to exalt and lift him up, as soon as you start saying it, you are wonderful. You are counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace, the true vine. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. And all of a sudden, you're speaking in tongues. Don't tell me praise is hard. Don't tell me prayer is hard because it's not. It's just because we're selfish and we're lazy at times, right? It's so hard to talk. <laughs> right, we could give them lip service too. But I'm saying if you're if you really are trying to yes Lord I really will come here and I want to magnify you and I want to exalt you I tell you what it you'll yeah it doesn't take much when you start telling them and especially exalting him above the situation I know sometimes we come in on a Sunday morning and we're just like Ugh. I'm telling you, if you get into it and you, oh, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I'm going to praise you and magnify you above this, this fatigue, above this weariness, above this horrible, this past week that I've had has just been crazy. Lord, I want to come in here and cast it all at you because I know that you care for me. I cast these cares, okay? I cast these cares of me not feeling like worshiping and not praising and not the care that I have of not feeling like I want to give you everything. I cast this upon you, Lord. I pray for your will to be done. I pray for a spirit of peace. I pray for, uh, you know, that I would have an attitude and a, and, a, and a spirit of thanksgiving. Because his word says, enter into his courts with praise and thanksgiving. I don't know. He deserves it. He's worthy of it. He doesn't have to do anything else. Right? He doesn't have to do anything else. He's done it all. He is all. He's in all. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Jeremiah 23, 5 through 6. <clears throat> Jeremiah 23. I'm not going to sing the song. 23, 5 through 6. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely, and this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness, the righteous branch, the sprout or descendant of David, clearly the Messiah, Jehovah, our righteousness, right? Because we know he's our righteousness because our righteousness is filthy rags. He is the one true God. He is righteous. And we, you know, the thing that's so great about God and being a, 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 a conduit and being a, um, a child of God, a son of God, that where we can put on his righteousness, I know we talked about, Lord, take this garment of heaviness and give me a garment of praise. Lord, but that you would robe me in your righteousness. Amen? And he'll robe us in his righteousness. I, we put the armor on, right? And hopefully we're, you know, trusting in the armor every day. You know, that shield of faith. The fiery darts from the enemy. You know what? I don't even care, enemy. I got the shield of faith. That my God is greater, that love, you know, that his love is greater than any sin in my life even today. I got the, my feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of the peace. Wherever my feet go, there's peace. Wherever I stand, there's peace, and my, that peace is going to remain. 
we could take the sword of the Spirit. We could take the Word of God and we could use that. We could pray the Word of God. Fit with the breastplate of righteousness, His righteousness. The helmet of salvation to where our head, our mind is protected from every one of those unclean thoughts, imaginations, and whatever it might be to where our mind can be protected. Well, you know, we got the, the helmet of salvation, but and why was the, the, the crown of thorns placed upon Jesus' head? That was for our protection as well, so that our minds can be healed. You know, we, we, we can receive from him, God, every day power, love, and a saved mind and thinking. I can receive that from him every day. Praise God. Micah. Micah. Five and two. Here we go. But thou, Bethlehem Ephratah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. Bethlehem, Ephrata, when we're talking about Bethlehem, Bethlehem signifies the house of bread. Why not the bread of life have been born there? In the, the house of bread, because we, what is Jesus? He is the bread of life. That's what I love about those, all those names. Though all, like I said, all those names can help us to get to a, into a place of that, that reverence. Right, so we, we revere him, we respect him for who he is, and we, we get to exalt him because of all of these titles that he has and these names, right? We, we get to lift these up and say, Yes, Heavenly Father, you are the bread of life. You are, and I love, you know, you are the rose of Sharon, you are the lily of the valley. And I know a few weeks ago I talked about how, you know about the rose and you know the the things that would go are signified in the rose and whatnot and and the lily of the valley and he is the lion of the tribe of Judah. <laughs> Praise God! It just I don't find it funny, but it just I just love it to where how we the Bible talks about how the enemy is like a li- a roaring lion just walking around who he could devour. But you know what? I don't even have to worry about that because my God is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He might be the lily of the valley and he might be the rose of Sharon, but you know what? He is also, he might be the lamb of God, but he is the lion of the tribe of Judah as well. He is my, my strong tower. He is my defense. He is my, my, my strength. I mean, he's everything. He's everything from the lily to the lion. He's everything from the rose to the bread to the lamb to the stronghold to, to our defense, to our shield. Praise God. And, you know, we can escape. You know, I used to get high and drunk to escape, right? I used to get high and drunk to escape everything. I, try, I would try to escape life, okay, if I could just say it like that. That's what it was. Knowing that, it, but as soon as that you got out of that high or out of that drunk, you know, whatever it was, that everything else was still there. Life was still there. Hurts and pains were still there. I still, oh, I, yeah, I guess I did just lose another job. Did, whatever this problem is now financial situations whatever it doesn't matter what it is i tried to escape everything by doing this but you know what we can escape to that secret place with the lord we can still escape i don't have to get high and drunk but i can escape and get into that secret place with him and spend fellowship with him and spend time with him and allow him to minister to me I can minister unto him, and he can minister unto me. If he needs to apply the balm of Gilead for some healing, he'll apply the balm of Gilead. If he needs to correct me or chasten me, he can do it in that secret place. Oh, hallelujah. I, if we could just ever rec- have revelation of the, the great opportunity that we have to connect with him in prayer by his spirit. We can connect with him. Oh, hallelujah. 
And when we do that, I, I, could, I should be able to come out of that like, pfft. I'm walking with the, the line of the tribe of Judah. I'm walking with, with shield. I'm walking with sword. I'm walking with peace. I'm walking within his righteousness. I'm walking with his healing virtue. I'm walking with his forgiveness. I'm walking, hallelujah, with the glory and the majesty of the, the king of kings and lord of lords. Praise God. Yes, go ahead, look at me. Right? You know how people are looking at me. People are noticing something about me. That's right. Look, it's the light of God that dwells in us, that, that he puts in us. <laughs> he called us a, pe a peculiar people. He called us oh, royal, too, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't mean we need to walk about like some spoiled, rich, royal kids, though. We got to have the right attitude. We can have a Christ like attitude. We can have the very character and nature of Jesus Christ. We can have the purity of Christ. I've got to spend that time with Him. I've got to spend that time with Him. So, I, yeah, Micah, we read Micah 5 2. He would be ruler whose going forth was from everlasting. Almost there. So back to Peter, when he was talking about, uh, he said, For a Jew to say, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, was to say, You are Jehovah, the one true God of Israel. That is why Jesus replied to Peter in this way in Matthew 16. He said, Upon this rock, upon this revelation of who I am, I will build my church. So when we have that revelation of who he is, what can he build upon us? What can he do in our lives when we have that revelation? You know what? You know, I believe that he's God. Like I said, I believed that there was a God before I came to him. I believed. I called on his name. Lord, I, th Lord there's got to be something different. There's got to be something different than this life, something better. I don't want this. And he showed up. He was there. So what did he build upon after that? After I had the revelation of who he was, that he's Savior. After I had revelation of who he is as healer. After I had revelation of who he is as counselor and comforter and friend. What, kind, what, is, what can he build? He said, told Peter, upon this revelation, I'm going to build my church. What can we as the church, as the body of believers, when we have revelation of things, of who he is, what can he build upon us then, individually? And it's got, it goes back to that personal time in prayer and, and reading and studying and that connection with him. He could give, <laughs> because not every one of us, is. he's not going to wait for everybody to have the same, right? He's not going to wait. Different people, different parts of the body are going to work and, and minister differently. But you know what? Your, your part is just as important as the parts that sit up here. Our part is just as important as the body because they might be operating as hands right now. And the Lord's like, I need some feet to move this thing. And there might be someone sitting out here and all of a sudden revelation comes and it, whatever. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to happen. But you know what? We talked about signs and wonders. We're talking about the power of the, you know, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. Thus saith the Lord. And if we got the gift of, of God dwelling within us, we got his spirit. What is he going to do through us that have his spirit? What is he going to build upon us as we connect with him in prayer by his spirit? What is he going to manifest in our lives? What is he going to reveal to us in our lives? I don't know, but I bet you, well, I don't bet you because I'm not a betting man, but I guarantee you, I guarantee you, because there's not a lot of guarantees in this world, I guarantee you if we give, if we give God the time, he's going to do something in our lives. He's going to do something miraculous. He's going to do something, uh, something that just came to my mind was that burning bush. The Lord put that fire in that bush. We can be that bush. We can be that thing that is planted in his righteousness, that tree planted in his righteousness where all of a sudden we catch fire. It's not going to consume. It's not going to consume us, but we catch on fire by, the, you know, that fire that falls from heaven and can consume all the things that are in my life that need to be consumed. I have some things that need to be consumed, right? 
<laughs> I do. We all do. And I know we're, I'm kind of jumping a lot of different places. Hopefully we're just taking what the Lord wants us to take. But, yeah, upon this revelation, I will build my church. From this time on, he began to show things to his disciples The Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus is not just another name. The name of Jesus is the full revelation of God. In Luke 2.11, you can see Jehovah, Jeshua, Savior. You know what, let's just look there real quick. Luke, Luke, Luke (laughs) 2.11. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord, a Savior. Oh, you know what? And, oh, this was so awesome Monday night at prayer. Um, Deuteronomy 6 and 4. I'm going to start at 3. Hear, therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee, In the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And we were at prayer up here Monday night at prayer. And I was sitting right here. And all of a sudden the Lord gave me that scripture hear O israel the lord our god is one lord and as soon as he gave me that scripture i felt like well i know i I mean i felt i seen like it was like i just seen like the legs of an angel walking right here and i felt and i believed that i was supposed to read that and that that angel was going to go and take that out into this area because you know the lord said that we have too many gods small g lowercase g too many gods in the in in our world today we have too many gods the god of me the god of finances the god of perversion the god of whatever the god of self the god whatever these small g's small gods we put have out here to where this angel is going to take took that word that night on monday night and took it out and i you know i read it again and i said you know what let me just change it up a little bit i said here O clute the Lord our God is one Lord. Hear, O Lake Jackson, the Lord our God is one Lord. Hear, O Freeport, in the name of Jesus, the Lord our God is one Lord. And I believe that, you know, that we can, the people are going to have a revelation of this. And us as the body, as believers, as the church, like I said, he could build, what is he going to build upon us? But when people come to us and say, you know what? For whatever reason, they're drawn to us. For whatever reason, they're gonna they're asking questions though. People, I don't know. There's people asking questions. People want something. People are so, and I know we've we've heard about this. How people are so caught up in the paranormal and and you know spirits. Well, you know, let me tell you about a spirit. Let me tell you about the Holy Spirit. You want you? Why are you so amazed with all these unclean spirits? That have to bow, you know, everything has to bow down to the one true God that gives me, fills me with his spirit. (laughs) It's just, this blows my mind how people are just so caught up in that. And how people are so caught up in, remember back in the day when Montel Jordan, that talk show, was it Montel? He'd have that psychic on there and she'd be telling, that's the devil. But people would be, oh, my gosh, this woman is used of God. No, she is not. No, people aren't like that are not used of God. That is divination. That is sorcery. That's witchcraft. But they're doing some good things. Oh, yeah, they are. Yeah, we think, you know, but that's of the devil. But people get caught up in that stuff. Tarot cards and reading the palms and crystal balls and fortune tellers and this and that. Oh, hallelujah, Lord, that there would be revelation that would come forth in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. If you would be, if it would be all right, if you would just stand with me in the name of the Lord, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus.
Praise God. And some of us are like, I don't want to stand. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, we could receive all kinds of healing. We could receive grace and mercy tonight. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for your message, Father. Thank you for your promises. In the name of Jesus. Once again, Lord, we loose the gift of faith, Lord, that our faith in you would not fail, that our faith in you would not waver. In the name of the Lord, that as we pray, Lord, that we would have faith for those prayers, that we would have faith, Lord, that you are a prayer-answering God. In the name of Jesus, and I pray for the body of Christ tonight, Lord, that we would be united together in one mind and one accord with you, Lord, bound with cords of love that cannot be broken in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we ask for your healing virtue to touch the body of Christ. We ask for your healing virtue to touch our spouses and our children right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, that we might be healed, that we might be made whole. Father, I thank you for this, Lord. I bless you for this, Lord. Nonetheless, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. And Lord, I ask that you would order our steps according to the word of God, that iniquity would not have dominion in our lives, Lord, and that by your grace that we would choose to know you better, Lord, and that we would choose to fellowship with you, Lord, that we would choose that communion with you, Lord, on a daily basis, and that we would grow and mature spiritually, Lord, according to your will. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we praise you and exalt you, Father, and we pray, Lord, that as we lay our heads down tonight, Lord, that we would be blessed with sleep that is pleasant, that we would be blessed with sleep that is sweet to us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And I pray, Father, that our eyes, Lord, would you anoint our eyes, Lord, and that our eyes would become unscaled, Lord, that our eyes would become unveiled, O oh Lord, that we might see those things that you want us to see and that you would speak to us, Father, and deal with us, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, that unchanging name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God loves you. And now go home. <laughs>